Hey there, in today's video, I'm gonna preview the Boston Marathon 2024. I'm running the Boston Marathon 2024, and I decided to make a video of my training and all that goes into going into the Boston Marathon, then run the marathon, hopefully, and uh, make a review video encapsulating all of the things that I learned and you never know, some things that I might have thought might happen that didn't happen and various observations after I've run the Boston Marathon 2024. Today is Sunday the 12th of November 2023 and last Sunday the 5th of November 2023 I ran the New York City Marathon and before I left New York I reprogrammed my Garmin to the Boston Marathon 2024 and it's telling me it's in 22 weeks and one day it's telling me it starts at 10 o'clock on Monday, April 15th, 2024. Don't think I'll be starting at 10 o'clock. It's telling me that I'll be running it in three hours, 54 minutes and 24 seconds, and that will be 11 degrees. And those latest figures will change as training goes on. But so far, that's what it's telling me. The big thing I have to do is reset my mental focus to running the marathon. The training, I'm using a stride training plan that uh, Steve Paladino's uh, training plan, it worked really well for me in New York. It was an incredibly enjoyable way of training. That was the first thing. I mean, I didn't run well in New York. That, that wasn't really my plan. I did three races last year. I did Rotterdam, uh, three marathons. Rotterdam, I did the Jack and Jill Downhill Marathon in Seattle, and then I did New York. It was always the plan just to enjoy New York, and I, I really did. I set a personal best in Rotterdam, and that enabled me into the uh, Boston Marathon 2024. So I've put in the stride training plan with the 16 weeks, and it indicated that I would start training on December 26th, 2023, so the day after Christmas. So that's kind of ideal, but up till then, I want to maintain my fitness. I'm going out. It might be a knock at the door at any second, but I'm going out this morning for a, a short run just to uh, get the legs up and going. They're fine after New York. In fact, they're really good after New York. Uh, I just didn't run fast enough. But uh, yeah, I, was, I could have run any day this week. It would have, wouldn't have been a bother. But we're running Sunday and we're just going out nice and easy and I'm testing a pair of shoes. So yeah, looking forward to the Boston Marathon 2024. It's now 18 weeks and four days away from the Boston Marathon 2024. And I'm making this section of the video to show you the decisions that I've made so far. So my, my training is, at the moment, all I'm doing is light training, 5Ks, three or four times a week, and then uh, maybe a little bit longer at the weekend. All I'm trying to do is maintain fitness before training starts, officially, <laughs> my 16-week training program starts on December 26th what's known in Ireland as Stevens's Day, Boxing Day in the UK. So handy day because all the Christmas festivities might be uh, finished sort of by then. So at the moment, I'm trying to lose a little bit of weight. <laughs> Not the best time of year to try and lose a bit of weight. What I'm trying to do is lose a bit and maintain it so that when I get to the line in Boston, I'm hoping to be two or three kilograms lighter than I was in um, New York. I, I sort of lost a lot of weight and then it just slowly crept up over over the time and uh, there's always a weight versus power argument but yeah I think I could stand to lose a few pounds so I'm doing that. Um, other decisions I made I decided on the flights. Aer Lingus fly from Dublin to Boston I prefer to generally fly with the carrier of the country I'm going to typically if I'm going going somewhere and um, this time, JetBlue have announced new services in Ireland. I decided I'd try JetBlue's Mint. So I'm flying to Boston, and I think on the way back, because it was cheaper to go by JFK in New York. And I'm kind of looking forward to that, because the last time I was in America, I was in New York, and I maybe I'll see the nice skyline in the evening. Anyway, it doesn't doesn't bother me. I'm, I'm, I'm flying home at that point in time, and so I'm going with JetBlue. It turns out that JetBlue... <laughs> failed to prepare, prepare to, uh, I, uh, I hadn't realized that JetBlue are the actual sponsors of the Boston Marathon and uh, I could have got 10 bucks off the flight if I had uh, <laughs> known that. I don't know if it's 10 bucks off each segment, e either way, it's not, not a big deal, but it is actually nice to fly with someone who is supporting the marathon. So that's kind of cool. I've done that and that is uh, cast in stone, I suppose. Then what's happening is that uh, I've booked a hotel I changed my hotel. So I have various apps, I've mentioned this before, but I have various apps that I use for um, booking hotels. As soon as I got into Boston, I booked a hotel 
And then, or as soon as I got the qualifying time, I, I booked a hotel. Thanks, Chris, for the advice. It was a really good piece of advice. Hotels in Boston at that, that time are very expensive. Then I waited a while, and I typically, because I booked through an app, I can, I can um, uh, cancel, uh, usually to a certain, close up to the date. So I then, <laughs> after it turned out that, that a lot of people didn't make it, I then went back online and I found another hotel about a grand cheaper overall for the four to five days I'm staying. So I booked that and so I'm staying in the Hilton Honours Suites. I don't quite know the difference between suites and regular Hilton Honours apart from you seem to get a, a kitchenette, but they seem to be about the same price. So I'm not sure, maybe a little bit more. Anyway, I have a kitchenette so I can make my own oatmeal and do all that kind of stuff. And it's, uh, it's, it was very hard. Boston, you get a bus out and then you, you, you run back into, into the city to in around somewhere near Copley Square. And it was hard enough to get a hotel around there within any reasonable sort of price. So this is fine. It's a bit out in some respects, but you know, you're running a marathon, you, you can walk a lot. That's not a problem. So, and I like walking. I've been to Boston before. So I like that. I'm sort of out where in a sort of, it looks a bit dead to be honest, but that's fine because I won't be going out before the marathon. Um, there's a celebratory night afterwards in Fenway Park. I'm a big baseball fan, so I'm hoping to go to that. I would like to have um, stayed maybe closer to Fenway then, but there just there just it, there was no hotel near near there, etc., etc. That I could get within. But anyway, so I'm staying downtown. I'm staying near the cruise terminal. It's it's on a subway route. I laugh because they say subway. I think it's line uh, S2. It's called a subway because it's a bus that I think goes under the river in a tunnel. I don't know. Anyway, it looks handy for the airport. It looks handy and, and Boston looks pretty easy to get around. And I do a lot of walking and I've, I've been to Boston before, as I said. So the flight is booked. The hotel is booked. I may change the hotel yet again. Who knows? I, I doubt it. I think it's pretty much cast in stone. And so the other decisions I've decided on the training plan. So I'm doing a stride training plan that starts on, on as I said, Stevens Day. And then I'm also, I've decided that. I have, I thought I had decided on the shoes. I was going to try and run the marathon in the Alpha Fly 3s. I'm hoping to get the first batch on January the 4th. If I don't, there'll be plenty released before the, the, the actual run itself and plenty in the run up to the marathon in the spring in, or in the summer in Paris in the Olympics. So there'll be lots of those, but then a couple of other interesting shoes popped up, one by New Balance and a couple of other shoes. So who knows? And uh, it's dangerous to predict you're gonna be running a shoe when you haven't even tried it on. So. Yeah, so the shoe is yet to be decided. Um, I'm not totally sure of the running top. I have a couple of ideas. And the shorts will be depending on my nutrition. And that's the next big thing I'm trying to decide. So I've, I've, I will be taking Morton's drink mix beforehand. I, I can actually quite like that, um, but I can't take the Morton gel anymore. And I don't really like sugary gel. So I'm testing all sorts of stuff. I went out to the Cathlon. There's loads of stuff here around the table to test the almond energy bars. Um, they come in these, it's not, these aren't the almond ones, these are the date ones. They come in these little packages, easy to tear off. Very easy to put into shorts. These are some jellies that I tested. Um, so I tested nougat bars. Um, I, I mean, I really go to town on the testing. Uh, so here's a big box of jellies up to make my way through. And all sorts of gels. There's an apple gel. I don't know, what's this one? This one is uh, lemon. Uh, some have some, some have caffeine, some don't. This is... Um, Cola definitely has caffeine in it. This is salted caramel. I really like salted caramel, but I took this the other day. Unfortunately, I bought a big box of these, but I, I, I won't be, they're, they're too sweet for me. Maybe the other ones are too sweet. Um, the nougat bars and all the little bars that, that the cattle make are re really good. They taste really good. And they have the advantage that you won't be, um, they won't get mess over your hands. They're easy to open, but I'm a bit worried that I might get, uh, uh, that chewing them mightn't be that great, but I don't, I don't know because um, I might and I might mix these date ones are really really good and I had um, I think I had the almond bar before I went running last night and had loads of energy when I was running for some reason So yeah, they're the kinds of decisions I'm making at this time of year before uh, Yeah, but I've managed to mentally switch on to wanting to train that was the I suppose the thing in the, in the last segment I made but I've, I've mentally switched on. I really do want to train well for this, uh, yeah, for the Boston Marathon. So, yeah, see you in the next segment. According to the watch, it's Friday the 15th of December, 
and I am 17 weeks and three days away from the Boston Marathon and I am about to start training in 11 days time, the day after Christmas. And unfortunately, I've picked myself up an injury. I was uh, just hanging up some laundry the other day, standing up, bending down, when I got a sudden sharp pain in my left lower back and I thought I was gonna to have to ring an ambulance. The pain was on real like nothing else I've, I've ever felt and I, I, I crippled myself down the ground I crawled across the floor to find the phone um, and then I was able to crawl onto the couch uh, take some ibuprofen and hope for the best and it's gotten that was about three or four days ago it's gotten I can now walk I can walk freely on it but yesterday I was out and I could feel a few sharp uh, twangs of whatever was going on I suppose it, I don't think it's connected particularly to the injury I had last year in terms of, I don't think they are the same symptoms. I'm wondering if it's the same cause, so I'm going to urgently expedite getting a sit, stand, desk, and do more standing than sitting. And other than that, it's coming a great time. I mean, I had mentally, really mentally switched on to training. I'd been doing, a, back doing some, some, some good interval training. I did a jingle bell dash on stride, and I was really enjoying it. Mentally, I had switched on, so, yeah, an injury is terrible, but it's a great time. I mean, if I got this the day before the Boston Marathon, that's something. But 11 days out before training begins seriously is probably the best time you could get it. I, uh, <laughs> If there's no more blog posts after this, you'll know what happened. But uh, hopefully it'll all ease up. I'm doing a lot of resting. I'm going to go on to the indoor bike, which is my standard MO when I'm training is Get onto the indoor bike that's number one try and use some bouncy shoes my nike invincible threes is probably a shoe of choice i've still a lot of mileage left in the two so i might do in the twos hop onto the treadmill the treadmill is good last time i used the treadmill extensively i got bad vertigo then i used the sauna and i got really bad skin <laughs> problems i solved those two i'm now back to sort of the, the back but hopefully and it's just one of those things you've got to go through when you're marathon running is you get little injuries uh, last week I had a, a niggle with my Achilles that actually went away. It was there for about three weeks and it's gone away, but replaced by this uh, pain down here. But yeah, some exercising. And ironically, I had gone um, the previous, about three days prior to getting my back injury. Uh, I don't think they're connected. Maybe they are. I had decided to go to some core body strengthening classes. That was one of the things I wanted to improve on in the run up to Boston was doing some core strengthening to help avoid getting any injuries. So that didn't quite work according to plan. But look, it's okay. It's a nice time of the year to get it. Um, lots of nights out. It is It is the absolute perfect time to get an injury. Nobody wants to get an injury, but let's look on the bright side. So today is Monday, the 18th of December, 2023, and I'm back running. The watch is telling me that the Boston Marathon is in 17 weeks time. The Boston Marathon is run on a Monday. And it also tells me I'm gonna run it in four hours, three minutes and 55. That estimate will go down as I do more training. I'm back training, my, my back is sore. It was really dreadfully sore last week. But as I really realized last time I had a back injury, motion is lotion and actually once I get moving, I rested for about a week. But once I'm moving, it's, uh, it starts to get better. And um, yeah, initial bit of discomfort, but I, I find if I'm just lying around, I, I did absolutely no steps. Yes, I didn't do anything yesterday, and I was no better than I was the day before when I did some steps. And I didn't feel any better than I do now, having been running in the gym. I wanted to do some testing of my stride, foot pod and the foot path, and make a video about that. So I just decided to go back onto the treadmill, which, it was painless, really. I mean, once I'm actually moving, it's fine. So I was testing the Infinity Run GTXs versus Nike Vaporfly 3s and the Stride footpad, footpath on the Stride footpod. So yeah, all that went really well. It's great to be back running even small amounts at low speeds a week before training officially begins for the Boston Marathon 2024. So according to my watch, we are Monday the 25th of December, 2023 and we are 16 weeks out from the Boston Marathon and training for me officially starts tomorrow so I'm um, really really excited about that I'm really excited about the training luckily enough my back injury that I had it was really severe but it didn't last hugely long 
may reoccur but this little ball probably the cheapest thing i bought all year i bought it in decathlon and um, it's a really hard ball rubbing it against between myself and the wall has really really helped so i'm hoping it doesn't reoccur I'm certainly hoping it doesn't recur today for the race but we'll see today i'm going to uh, look at food but i decided to do that because uh, well you know today is, is actually christmas day and uh, i decided to eat a lot of gels and um yeah i'm trying to do that and then i'm trying to compare what they might be like so i would wish you happy christmas but by the time this goes out it's more likely happy patriots day the boston marathon is run on patriots day but looking at some of the stuff i have here i'm trying a couple more gels I, i'm not sure what i'll have i brought bought this high five energy gel aqua I previously showed all the ones I got in Decathlon. I've got a lot of energy chews. So these are Cliff Blocks Black Cherry Caffeine ones. I've used these loads of times in half marathons. I ran them in training and they're fine. It's just I'm not sure how many of those I can consume during an entire marathon and uh, in terms of taste. And again, a lot of these I might mix and match. So there's Power, ba Power Gels by Power Bar. There's High Five Energy Gummies. I basically cleaned out the store. Uh, there are these extreme sport beans and again some of the problems with these is they're probably very nice but I might have to consume an awful lot of them to munch my way through but when I did the virtual New York marathon I got some peanut balls and I rammed some jelly babies or jelly beans into them and so I trying some energy balls that I got in Aldi and I've got various different types of those there's also some electrolyte fast chews these you've got to this is to replace electrolytes but you've got to do it says um two tablets every 15 to 30 minutes and there's 10 of this so i'm not going to use these I, i'd need to use too many of them fine in a gym where you can have a whole stash but i will use the salt tablets i usually use when i don't drop them which are you take one per hour so i'll use those Th those have, have seen me well so far but two things i am looking forward to trying one is these are torque gels these are these have some really interesting flavors they come well reviewed there's cherry bakewell lemon drizzle raspberry ripple rhubarb and custard apple crumble and strawberry yogurt so i'm going to try these and see i mean they they sound like they taste really well so i'm going to try those but i might mix and match so i got this um this looks to me to be really promising this is kendall mint company they have a really interesting idea in that this gel comes in a, a bag and then you uh, you pop it into this soft flask that they sent with it so they say 70 grams per hour and you can fit 150 grams in here so you can get two servings in this or two, two hours worth of serving so if i brought two of those and i have loads of those i have various ones by salmon they're basically hydro pack 150 ml so i might do that but most likely i'll mix this with uh, some torque gels and it just it just depends on i suppose what they actually taste like and taste it's fine tasting something in the kitchen here with your your christmas dinner it's a bit different when you're out on the run. So I'm going to be testing all of these in the coming months. I'm also going to try and find other stuff. I wanted to get uh, honey stingers. I can't get those in Ireland easily, the waffles. But there are Stroop waffles that I want to try and get. So I'm going to try some of those. And I'm going to the National Running Show in the UK in Birmingham. And I'm going to try and find all sorts of stuff there. And just try all sorts of stuff in the same way I did when I first started marathon training and landed on the Morton and so I just want a bit of variety now even though Morton are one of the sponsors of the uh, Boston Marathon I'm going to look for something different on the day. To set up a stride training plan I set it up on the phone so I hit the stride app and then stride training plans comes up the top and you can see a variety of training plans I'm going to go to the marathon training plan I'm going to go stride training plans by Steve Palladino which is great choose a stride plan so I'm going to pick a plan i'm going to pick four days a week the reason i pick four days a week is i run tuesday wednesday thursday and then saturday i leave free i will do running but it could be my local park run 5k it could be some training or some filming for shoes etc etc and then long run sunday so put the four days and then it's going to recommend a, a, a training plan i'm just going to say level two i'm just going to go organize for 20 weeks but it's extendable i'm going to choose another level because uh, I want to see other levels. Let's just go through those, ignore the ultra human ring stuff. Level three, optimized for 16 weeks, but that's what I want. So I'm gonna go with level three. I'm gonna just continue that long run on Sunday. So that's the day I do my long runs. When is your race? It is Monday the 15th of April, 2024. Gonna continue that. Start training, I'm gonna start training tomorrow. I did all this before, so this is my second go of doing this. So start training tomorrow, continue. 
and then it will populate the entire thing for me. Plan description by Coach Palladino, and I'm just gonna go schedule, and then that will schedule it. Now, it will schedule it, not necessarily on the days that I want to do the running, so what I will typically do is go onto the computer and juggle them around. By, by that, what I mean is we'll have a look at go to plan analysis. So there's some analysis of what to do in various weeks. There's also all sorts of things, but if I go to the calendar on my uh, phone, you can see that it started to populate the calendar, calendar. So I'm running on the Tuesday. There's also a drills put in uh, beside it. Wednesday, I'm not running. Thursday, I'm running. And it probably has me running on Saturday. I'll move the Saturday to the uh, Thursday. I juggle it basically. So it's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then Sunday. So I'll do that on the PC or the Mac. When we jump onto the Mac and my computer, you can see this is what I see in front of me. You see the various different days where there's training going all the way down to the uh, Boston Marathon. And so it's got all of that going down. It'll pop in down now. Here's the Boston Marathon training all the way, but it's got them on days that I may not wish to do my training. So I just move all of those around manually. You can just drag, drag and drop. So I will go, I'll pop this Thursday run onto the Wednesday and I'll pop the Saturday run onto the Thursday. And I'll do that every week for the entire process. There are a lot of drills. I won't do many of those drills, but they're all there if you want to do them. They got added in the latest plans. That will then synchronize with my watch, my Apple Watch. So when I want to go for a run, I simply well, put the strides on the, the stride duo because I'm using two of them, will be on each of the shoes, and then I simply put the two together. What I have noticed when you put the stride duo in the last week is it drains a lot more battery power that they seem to drain a lot faster than one on their own. So I'll be careful of that, but essentially I will follow these plans right through to the Boston Marathon 2024. Time for another look at the Garmin. It says seven weeks, two days to the Boston Marathon. I've been busy since the last segment. The 128th Boston Marathon on Monday, 15th of April, 2024. And it's telling me I will run it in three hours, 52 minutes and 48 seconds, which is faster. I'm being getting better in the training. One of the things about the Garmin is it'll tell you. So I think after Christmas, I was it was saying I do it in four hours and 14 minutes. So I've got that down a bit. It's only an estimation. The fastest I've ever got an estimation down was three hours and 40 minutes before the Berlin Marathon. I'm already going and my personal best of actually running a marathon was in Rotterdam in three hours, 43. It's not an exact science and a huge amount depends on this and those and not that. However, at least training is going well. I'm injury free at the moment. This wonderful little ball from Decathlon has worked its magic and my back is not giving me any grief. Training has been going really well. I'm enjoying my stride plan. I was out in Latvia, which I really enjoyed. And I was off in Birmingham at the running show. And that sort of ate into the training. I did the training, but it ate into it a little bit because you're traveling and very busy. The Latvian trip was incredibly busy. So there was, there was that. I've made a couple of decisions. I know what the nutrition is. I'm going to be using this, the uh, Kendall Mint. I mentioned it earlier and, and I made a whole video about it, but I'll be do, running with two of these. That's the, the gel I will need. I'll have two bottles of this. It's um, a hydro pack with about uh, 150 ml of, of, of gel in each. That's what I'm going to be running with. I might need both full, uh, but it's gel I like. That's going to influence the shorts. I really have a lot of decisions I haven't made so far. So I haven't got any of the kit decided. I'm pretty sure the shoe. So I've tested two shoes. This is the Alpha Fly version three, and this is the New Balance Fuel Cell Super Comp Elite version four. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> I was trying to remember these names for this. But anyway, these two shoes are, are, are really good. I've ran more or less exclusively in this for a while, and then exclusively in this. And this week, I'm really trying to test between them. The pros for this shoe for Boston, I mean, it sounds ridiculous, but it's the hometown shoe. <laughs> so there's that. It's, it's, it's a really great shoe. I do want to run a marathon in the Alpha Fly 3. And so I'm almost certainly going to be running in these. And the difference between the two shoes without testing them back to back this week, which I'm about to do, is one has an eight mil heel drop and one has a four mil. So this has the eight mil. And I think on the long down stretches of, 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 the start of Boston going downhill with a slightly higher angle of attack on this will be beneficial. And I think the same when I'm going uphill, the, the, the greater drop in the shoe, I think is gonna help me a little bit. And I might get some energy return out of these foot pods, but I think they're both great shoes. 
Uh, we'll be running a marathon at some stage in this shoe, I would imagine. There's also, I think, the A6 Metaspeed Sky Paris to come out, but I'm, <laughs> I might save that whenever I get to Tokyo. But yeah, they're, they're, I think I'm almost certainly going to be running in this shoe. The shoes, or the, 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 the next decision will be the shorts, based on the capacity for the gels. I've got a couple of ideas. I have some that will work. So a couple of things like that. So all of that is going well. And as I said, I'm delighted to be injury free. One of the things I decided to do this time was to run, there's a 5K as part of the Boston Marathon, I guess, running festival. There's one in Chicago. I did the Abbott one in Chicago, but me being me, I went out too fast. <laughs> And uh, I paid. I certainly paid for it on the on the day of the the marathon. But this one is kind of good. It's on the Saturday, and then the race is on Monday. So there's a day in between, and you get to go around a bit closer downtown in Boston. I regretted not doing the one in New York I, I, because in New York, the five k you run you run down in around Manhattan, and that would have been kind of nice to do. I I, I regret not doing that one. Whilst at the same time being happy that I didn't lose the run of myself running around in Manhattan and have even more pain in the New York Marathon. But I'm looking forward to running the one in Boston and I'm going to go really easy. And the plan for Boston, as I stand here now, is to go really easy out of the blocks. Just go really easy, slowly coasting down hills and then look for those four sort of like the, the stairways to heaven, the four steps uh, that are Heartbreak Hill included in the run into Boston. I typically like hills. The main thing is to have some energy left for when you get to them. So yeah, that's uh, that's all playing around in my mind at the moment. But so far, training, so good. Flights, hotel are all organized. Shoes, pretty much. And yeah, lots done, lots more to do as the old cliche here in Ireland goes. Today is Tuesday, the 5th of March, 2024. I'll be running the Boston Marathon according to my Garmin in, let me see, five weeks, six days time. Monday 15th of April 2024 and I'll be running it in three hours 48 minutes and 24 seconds I'll be very happy if I do not sure but at least the Garmin shows I'm getting fitter and I have finally chosen the kit or most of the kit so we'll get down to the kit but I'll uh, go through the reasons I've picked these things the most important thing was the shorts and that is based on the nutrition I want to have to carry in Boston I really I don't like littering in any marathon but I particularly do not want to be littering in Boston and so I've decided to run with Kendall Mint which I need 140 milliliters of for my run. I'm going to take some caffeine and some non-caffeine so I'm going to reach forward and pick up these two hydro packs and one will be caffeine one will be non-caffeine and these go in the back of the shorts. I'll show a close-up of, of Quinn me slotting in these shorts. I've ran in these shorts before, so I know that that's going to work, but I'm going to carry some other things which I'm going to pick up again. So there's my iPhone. I always think in case of emergencies, it's really good to carry an iPhone. This will slot into our side pockets down the legs in this. The iPhone will go in one. In the other will go my, can you hear the crackling, trusty dude wipes, the just in case scenario, a glasses wipe and a towelette. So, you just never know. I've never needed to use any of these on a marathon, but I can carry them. So that's all the things I'll be carrying. Okay, so that meant the shorts. The shorts then dictated the hat. Well, I didn't have to, but they're Janji shorts, and that's my Janji hat. I ran the Buckeye Marathon in both of those. Hat's really comfortable. It's got a zip in it, so I can put my hotel key up there. That's really good. So those were the two decisions. And then I wanted to run in one of my sore running tops. The new Milers Club this year uh, didn't really float my boat. I loved the crisscrossy patterns. I wore this in Rotterdam, my fastest marathon at 3 hours 43 and 20 or 28 or whatever it was. But anyway, to qualify for Boston, I wore this. So I wanted to wear that and that was important to me. In the shorts, there's also a little loop you can put in to attach keys, but because I'm staying in a hotel, I, I won't have one. And then I'm, <laughs> well, I'm going to Boston. So, well, you know, Red socks. So I've got the red socks. Maybe they're orange, but you know, you could debate about that. And at the moment, Quinn is wearing the Alpha Flies, the Alpha Fly 3s. I will almost certainly be running those. I have got four carbon plate shoes to sort of choose from, but I think they're the ones that are going to be in this particular marathon. Partly because I think they will work, and partly because I really do want to run a marathon in the Alpha Fly 3s. 
and see what data I can collect. I will have stride foot pod. I'll also have it on the other foot. I couldn't attach Quinn, make him stand up whilst wearing alpha flies. So yeah, and I'll be wearing my uh, Rudy project glasses. So that will give you an overview, a quick brief overview of the kit. I'm planning to wear it. You never know what comes along, some shiny new short that I see come along, but yeah, that's the plan so far. It's Sunday, it's, uh, it's the 10th of March, I think. And behind me is what might be Host Village and Ireland's Eye, it's sort of out to the sea. I've climbed up, climbed up the Hill of Hope, I ran up the Hill of Hope. It's just something I really enjoy doing. I'm trying to get, obviously for Boston, you want to do the hills. This is quite a bit of elevation gain. I'll put some details in the uh, comments from my arm, the pictures from my Strava and from my uh, Garmin. So I'm wearing the Apple Watch with the Strava and the Garmin. I'm also wearing an ultra human ring, I think, the stride foot pods. And I'm wearing this little gadget, which is the ArcX, which I bought a while ago. And I use that, I've got earbuds in. I rarely run with earbuds, very rarely, but there's no one with me today. And I want to listen to a podcast. Thank you, Bartek, for sending me the podcast about the Boston Marathon. So I wanted to listen to that. So I've been doing that and uh, this little button, I can turn it on or turn it off. I don't, I just turn off all the sounds at any junctions, cars, etc. And I didn't use them on the hill. I sort of listened to, my, to myself panting and grunting on the way up the hill. But it's about, I'm about 10K in and I have about, I think about 16 or 17 to go. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm uh, wearing everything I'm going to be wearing in Boston, except hopefully not this sore or weather jacket, which is super for a day like this. But I do like to get the wet weather practice as well as the hills for Boston. And it's a little bit windy, not very windy. Actually, the wind is in the right direction for my run, I think, today. Or maybe when I get down to the seafront, it'll be a long, hard slog back to Dublin. But yeah, I'm really enjoying the training. It's going well. And uh, yeah, see you the next one. I've just finished my run. I'm in Ringsend Park. It's kind of deserted uh, Sunday morning. I ran just over 28k, around the time duration I was supposed to run. Sorry, Sorry that was... that's my fault. But I ran a bit quicker than I, uh, than I thought I would. But anyway, I'm back, glass are all steamed up. The watch says, uh, I think it's five weeks in a day, is it? Yeah, it's five weeks in a day to the Boston Marathon. It says I'll do it in 3.45, 40. I don't think I will, but you never know. But yeah, train's going well. That was a cracking run love the weather beautiful day for running we're wearing a different top in boston than that it'll be all the same hello doggy today is monday march 18th 2024 it's four weeks exactly from boston marathon and i'm driving north out of dublin to a small town called scaries where i'm going to run the inaugural st patrick's 10k st patrick's day was yesterday and I've decided to run a 10k to kind of just, um, I've got to do a, a, a hard session this week, 20 minutes flat out, so I thought why not do the 10k, and particularly because, well, Scaries is my hometown, the race runs by my brother's house and my sister's house, my sister lives in my parents' old house, so all my relatives in uh, one go, so I decided to do it. It's a very beautiful, I mean, it's a stunning morning. It's Ireland. You never know what weather you're going to get in March, but it's an absolutely beautiful morning. Scaries is, I'm just passing the airport now. Scaries is about 20 miles from the center of Dublin. I lived there. We, my parents bought a house there in 1970, and we lived there on and off for various periods over, for, for very many years. And um, it's very beautiful. The, it's by the sea. My sister and brother live overlooking the sea and uh, they yeah uh, it's very very picturesque it's a very beautiful part of Ireland and the course itself is flat it's mainly by the sea there's a little stretch inland but it's mainly by the sea and uh, it's course I know really well I've never run it as a race but I've run every street every road played everywhere it's uh, yeah very well known to me so I'm very excited the watch says I will do the three hours 45 29 to do the Boston Marathon and the watch is kind of telling me I'll do the 10k I could do a 10k in 45 minutes 50 the stride tells me 47 minutes 50 something like that I'm just taking it easy I'm not trying to break a personal best or do anything I'm just trying to run it and uh, run it and kind of sharpen myself up get used to what racing is like again before I go to Boston so I'm uh, I'm in a, a, a Nike top simply 
I, I will point out the car steers itself, <laughs> just in, just in case. Uh, anyway, the, the um, yeah, uh, the, the I'm wearing a, a top just to keep slightly warm. It's about 11 degrees centigrade. The weather is really stunning. It's going to be lovely. I've got arm sleeves on. I probably don't need them, but I'm wearing a, a sore top, a sore running top and I've got uh, sore running tights. They're really nice tights. I don't have to carry any gels or anything. So I'm just wearing these over my uh, Under Armour liners. I carry the phone. So I'm carrying the phone because I want to take some B-roll around Scaries because it really is nice. It's 8.46, the race begins at nine. The start is just over there. The windmill's behind me. I'm in Scaries the 10K. I'm hoping not to go out too fast. Uh, my watch is saying I'll do it in just shy of 46 minutes. I, if I do it in an hour, I'll be very happy. Uh, well, I'll do it more than an hour because it's a race. And, uh, but it's with Boston four weeks away. I don't want to risk any niggles, any injuries. I'm not trying to overdo it. It's, uh, I'm wearing my sore uh, top. I've got some sore tights on and uh, I'm wearing street flies. I considered, I've also got arm sleeves. I probably don't need them for the race, but I've brought them anyway. And uh, it's warmer than I thought it would be. It's about, I'm guessing it's about 12 degrees centigrade. It's a really beautiful racing conditions. There's a bit of light wind. There'll be wind on the way back. It's a looped course. I'd expect some wind somewhere, but not, it's not very strong wind. I can feel it now. You can probably hear it in the earphones, but uh, looking forward to start. Lots of alpha flies that I see around. I'm wearing street flies, Nike's 10K shoe, mainly because I haven't raced in it before and have a pair and been lying around the house for ages doing nothing. If I was trying to set a PP, I'd be in Vaporfly 3s, but I'm deliberately not. I'm trying to make this video to convince myself not to lose myself, just to enjoy the I know the race, I know the road. I don't know the race, it's the first race. I know the road very well. Next year, I'm, it's one of these races I'd like to do every year. It's a hometown race, I'd like to do it every year. It's a beautiful course. And I set a PB another year, but for the moment, just take it easy. And I would like to film it. It's very beautiful. It'd be nice to film it someday, but uh, yeah. Looking forward to the race and uh, see you at the finish. So how to go. Well, I finished in 47 minutes and 55 seconds, faster than I thought. I went down at 4.50. I kind of went, I wanted to go down at what I would thought a slow, comfortable pace, which is what I did. It was faster than I thought what slow, comfortable pace would be, but, I kept at it, I just kept at it right away until the end and then I put the, put the, uh, a couple of hundred yards, maybe a hundred yards of the fish, I put the hammer down. The hammer, it's it's twisty and the twisty section at the end and it's a very old hammer, but I put it down and uh, surprised myself at uh, how fast I could go on these street flies. Yeah, you can look at the data in the Strava. Or, I'll stick it up on the screen, but yeah, it's kind of surprised that. So four weeks to Boston, here we come. Today is Monday, the 1st of April, 2024. The Boston Marathon is two weeks away. <laughs> and this watch says, the Garmin says, I'm gonna do it in three hours, 44 minutes and eight seconds. So the training has reduced that time. And in this video, I'm gonna do some updates and then a little bit of planning because uh, two weeks away, a lot of stuff has been decided. One of the things that I found out after I ran the Scaries 10K, I, I ran it to kind of do a tune up and I discovered that there was an article on Canadian running with a coach called Dylan Sykes, who was recommending that you do a 10K and some of the benefits of it, which were pretty much why I did it. I was a bit nervous about doing it and having done it, it was really nice to read an article that someone thought it was a good idea rather than the opposite. But I wanted to get back into the idea of racing and the nerves and the, the trials and all that. And it was very good. Canadian running is a very good website that I look at quite a lot and it was really good. So that was, uh, that was pretty enjoyable to see that somebody had felt the same way about it. And um, a couple of things, some, some updates. The shoes, well, I had thought of the, uh, the Nike Fly 3s, then the A6 Metaspeed Paris came along. The, first of all, came along the uh, Sky Paris and then the Edge Paris, and I ended up buying both of those. I'm still not sure which of the three shoes I'm going to go with because I haven't got through everything. So there was that. I tested the gels and I really, really like the Kendall Mint gels, but I found that I was getting too much caffeine, which had an obvious effect once you went out. So now I've got the caffeine gel and I've got the non-caffeine gel. And the one I'm gonna take is the raspberry. I've got all the flavors, but I'm gonna have those. That's really good. I discovered that the after party is not at Fenway this year. The after party is in City Hall down in, um, Central Boston, so I'm gonna go do that. I'm gonna to go to Fenway instead on Tuesday and watch the Red Sox play, I think the Guardians. So I'm gonna go down on the Tuesday night. That should be great. I'm gonna sit right up the back on a little seat at the bar. So that's my plan and then wander around. The biggest thing I wanted to do this week was to review the course. Boston is notoriously hilly and I 
I really like to know a course before I go. All of my best runs have been on courses that I knew something about and vice versa. So I watched a lot of videos about running the Boston Marathon. I'll put them in the link. Well, I watched three specifically. I watched one when it was a John, the John Hancock Marathon. I think it's now Bank of America. So I watched that and I've watched that over and over again, done in a car from the bottom of a car. I did that in Book Arizona myself, can't do it in Boston. Then I watched a GoPro video, or it's probably a DJI if I'm honest, because I think the runner is Chinese and he's, he swaps various ones out and he runs the whole course. And like all YouTube videos, this one included, you can speed up, slow down, all that sort of stuff. Then I watched a great one which with Coach Chris and Coach Paul. It was really good. It was one of my favorite ones. I have to say it, was, it, was, it would be a favorite. And what it was was, so Coach Chris has set our personal best in, in Boston. Coach Paul is probably my age or, or, or thereabouts. He's run lots of Bostons. She's run lots of Bostons. And he talks about running it from a non-competitive stance. And she talks about running it from a competitive stance. And they go through uh, kilometer by kilometer or mile by mile or section by section. And it, it is really good. And again, the links will be in the description. But that was one I really did. It was really beneficial to watch. One of the things was that they showed the weather and I, I know the weather in Boston can be anything. What I realized after watching that video is that if the weather is really bad and it rains a lot, you're out in a muddy field on your own. So it's best to bring a sacrificial pair of shoes. We're probably all used to bringing sacrificial tops, a, a sweatshirt you, you want to discard, all that kind of stuff. But that was a really good video from watching from that point of view. So I learned that. And again, I watched the, the course over and over again. I also wanted to read the BAA regulations, the Boston Athletic Association. I, I read a lot of regulations and, and Boston is a very regulated marathon. One of the ones in particular is about filming. They discourage GoPros, but they do allow filming. Now, clearly there was the film where, where the guy filmed the entire thing. What they don't want is, or don't allow, is commercialization of that. So if I eventually get any footage on, onto the review video, it will be a non-commercialized video. And most of my videos are non-commercialized. The first couple of days go out and then I switch over when I figure lots of people have already watched them. But in this particular instance, I'll just try and have some footage and leave it on commercialized. So that, that seems fair enough because it is, it is nice when you're looking back at a review video that there is some sort of review of some of the images. So I'm hoping to get some in-race footage and I have, a, I have a plan for that. I'm still going to bring my iPhone in training, I I found that I started to get uh, abrasions down my leg. I keep my, my iPhone down, down the side of my leg. And for some reason, I got abrasions. And I run that way all the time. I've run several marathons. The new iPhone's heavier than the last one. Uh, yes, I weighed it this week. <laughs> but it's not that bad. And then I went out and I ran this weekend without any bother. So maybe it just needed a little bit of welting up. I don't know. But anyway, everything is is all sorted out with the kit, I think. You know, I, I did have last minute things, but the shoes I'm just not 100% certain on. But I'm, at this stage, I'm thinking Alpha Fly 3, but I'm doing a lot of tests this week with the A6 Meta Speeds, and it could be that I swap out for one of those. I had three really good runs in each of those shoes the over, over hilly conditions. And I had the first one I did in the Alpha Fly 3s, then I did one in the Meta Speed Sky Paris, and then the Meta Speed Edge Paris, which I did this weekend, and all were really good and you could be splitting hairs between them but yeah be one of those so let's have a dive into some of the training that i did and have a look i'm gonna stick on the computer here start to get a screen recording and we'll we'll uh, have a look at what i can find out on the computer i looked at various different websites to, to kind of get the idea of the elevation gain and loss in the boston marathon it's not always clear there's, there's a lot of conflicting evidence, shall we say, but we look at a couple of them. This is findmymarathon.com and the elevation gain, 18, 815 feet, 248 meters. Elevation loss, 1,275 feet, 388 meters. So a lot more loss than there is gain. And if you look at the profile, it's, it's rolling, but rolling downhill until mile 16, kilometer 25. And that's etched in my brain. And then it goes up to the top of Heartbreak Hill, which is five miles or eight kilometers. And I've watched the videos over and over again. One of the things that happens to me when I'm putting out effort, if, if I don't know the run, 
I, it, it, I find it very easy to stop it, it, it but if I know that I just get up to Heartbreak Hill and then it's it's downhill more or less to Boston I can cope with that so I've, I've, I've been I've watched the videos lots of times I'm gonna watch them even more I know the where the hill starts I know what kilometers it starts and in miles as well and I also know when it ends in kilometers and miles so I, I've got that pretty much rehearsed I also know that when I get towards Boston the sit go sign will be a, an uphill to that and I know it's going to be a lot further away than I think it is the sign is going to be there and I, I remember the, the last run down Chicago Chicago Marathon finding the straight really 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 long and really really tedious so I've that I have now got um, in my mind. So that is all sorted out in, in, in that sense. I also know that my legs might take a beating going downhill and, and all of that. And so for those kinds of reasons, I did a lot of hill training in Dublin. I ran up the Hill of Hoth, which is very steep and quite high, but it came fairly early on into run. And this weekend, I decided I was going to try and kind of replicate the Boston run, but I live in a valley. I live in the center of Dublin. So rivers through it typically that would be in a valley and so I have to run out to the hills so I'll have a quick look at what I did so let's have a look at the Boston Marathon first so I did my course on map my run and here's one from uh, that somebody else did in, in Boston it's got the the route on it for 42.95 this person ran it 275 meters elevation gain and then down if I go down to the bottom you'll see this little map and and it's got 151 meters to start and the gain is 275 meters so that matches and there's a profile down here and then if I go to the one I set up here in, in Dublin at the weekend 30 kilometers 3 hours 30 kilometers is what the target was according to my stride training and I, this route is 286 meters of gain so if I click on the Boston there's 275 meters of gain so you know about the same uh, gain I suppose my gain here is I started Early on, what I wanted to do is down here in about 25 kilometers is where my real climb begins. There's a climb before it, there's a there's a, a drop down before it, but I wanted to replicate that, and I wanted to make sure that I had uh, in this particular run the same elevation gain, maybe not the same loss because I had to climb up to get out of it. So I designed the whole thing to kind of replicate that when I got to 25 kilometers or thereabouts. I was going to go up the hill and it was going to be higher and harder than it would be in in Boston and if I look on my Garmin here you can see this is this is the route I ran 30.42 just over three hours 344 meters of ascent there's always differences between all of these kind of maps but this is taken directly from the Garmin so you can see it it rolls a lot out to step aside in Dublin and then and then across to Kalini up, the, up the, what's called the Vika Road. But if I look at this, my stamina was 100% at the start. It's, it's always at the start. Ended up at 15% at the end of marathon. Usually it's about 1%. I was out for three hours, so I lost three liters of sweat. I didn't actually take, I didn't have any water on the way, which, which is fine for me in a run like that. that. That was fine. I did have the gels, which were, were, were liquid. And I did take regular gels. I put out 337 watts average power, according to Garmin. It's different on stride. I'll do that next week. I'll go through the, the power calculations, but 344 meters total ascent, 310 millimeters total descent. So if I go back to this one, or sorry, this one, it's saying 248 meters of, of gain, 388 meters loss. And my Garmin says that I had, where is it? Yeah, I had 344 meters of ascent and 310 of descent so again going back just for my own yeah i climbed higher and i didn't descend as much but that that's fine i have uh, I, I i'm i kind of okay on on hills i'm i've got stocky little legs and so hills are something that i actually really like so i don't think i'll be too beat up what i wanted to do was make sure and really make sure that when i got the 25k i was going to go up a hill well, 325k and be tired, so 16 miles. I wanted to arrive at that, uh, and that's what's going to happen in Boston. So I was going up and down, and Boston will just be going down. It's rolling, but it won't be as, as rolling as going up a step side and down. 
in Dublin. And so what I wanted to do was make sure that my climb up was, was steeper and it was shorter. So it was a higher elevation. So I did that and that gave me confidence. It was the same reason I probably did the, the marathon in Scary, not the marathon, the 10K in Scary's was I wanted to get some confidence back into my running and that's what I've done. So yeah, I'm pretty much all prepared two weeks out. There's the shoes to be decided, but very little else. Everything else is pretty much decided and thankfully I'm injury free. So Boston, here we come. It's Tuesday the 9th of April 2024 and we're six days away from Boston. A couple of quick updates. This is the non-caffeine gel I'll be using. It's the Raspberry Mint by Kendall Mint and this is the caffeine which is Mint by Kendall Mint and this has electrolytes. This one has electrolytes and plus B vitamins. I don't care about the v B vitamins for my run but they do have the electrolytes. It's gonna make things simple. So you're gonna have to pack those in the in the hold of the airplane because the liquids slight worry about that in case i lose my suitcase but we'll we'll if we have to we'll cover that apart from that everything's going well the weather looks it's really strange in boston one minute it's sunny then it's wet and one week it was looks like, looking like 16 degrees on a saturday and the following week 16 degrees in the middle three degrees and snowy the temperature looks to be holding at about 15 16 17 degrees centigrade but it does look like it might be wet I don't mind if it's warm and warm and wet I can tolerate but because it's going to be wet I'm going to be bringing this shoe now I know in my regular shoes I keep them in I, 200 k's on a marathon shoe but these I walked in these are cloud venture waterproofs and they're badly worn here and they're badly worn here and uh, worn here I mean I wore these I ran in them a little bit walked endlessly in the same and then I got another version of the same thing. So these are totally worn out. I'm going to bring these with me because these will be very good to be wearing in a wet field and work as a sacrificial shoe if I need to do it. And speaking of shoes, I still haven't decided whether to run in either of these or neither. There's another pair on my feet. <laughs> this is the Alpha Fly 3 and this is the Metaspeed Sky Paris. I keep calling them all versions of Edge Paris Sky. Keep making loads of mistakes. These are the Sky Parises and on my feet are the Edge Parises. I'm I'm scheduled to do two fartlek runs today and tomorrow, the Steve Palladino stride training plan. And instead I'm gonna do three, they're half an hour each, of largely very easy running. So today I'm in the edges which are on my feet now, the Edge Paris. Then tomorrow I'm gonna to run in the Sky Paris and the day after that I'm gonna run the Alpha Fly Paris. Then I'm gonna wrap this video up and tell you which one I've picked and I'm gonna get on the plane and go to Boston Friday morning. We're four days away from the Boston Marathon and I've finally picked a shoe, which is important because I have to fly away tomorrow morning and I want to carry all of my running gear in my hand luggage so it's always there just in case. It's what I always do, I've lost luggage so often. So that's the plan, I need to pick one shoe. And if I was picking a shoe that I would feel most comfortable running in, it would be, without hesitation, the Nike Alpha Fly 3. It's a, it's a great shoe. It's one that I've really enjoyed running. I had a, a run over the hill of Hoth and then into Dublin. And I, I just rolled along really easy in the three. I did three fartlek sessions, one after the other. And yeah, it, it was, I just enjoyed it more than any other shoe but it's not the shoe I'm going to run in. What I want to run in is a shoe that I'm going to be able to run in when I'm really tired. And I deliberately tested over a 25K run up and down hills until I would then run up a hill at 25K and run up a higher distance, a higher elevation than will be in the Heartbreak Hill and a steeper elevation. That was my plan. I wanted to do that and get some confidence out of that. And I ran that in the Meta Speed Edge Paris. And in, in the fartlek that I was doing, I have preferred the Edge Paris to the Sky Paris. I keep mixing up the names, so just every now and then I stop to be sure. So I'm the Edge Paris is packed and ready to go. And the reason I'm gonna run the race in the Edge Paris is really simple. Both the Sky Paris and the Edge Paris are lightweight. They're both lighter than the Alpha Fly 3 and when I'm running up Heartbreak Hill I want as much lightness as I could possibly get and that meant yeah picking the Edge Paris 
actually as a runner-up I would have picked the I would have picked the Alpha Fly 3 because I just enjoyed it. I enjoyed both both of those shoes running more than the Sky Paris and because of the weight differential yeah I'm going to be running the Boston Marathon 2024 in the can't show because it's in the suitcase I'll be running in the a6 Metaspeed Edge Paris. Thanks a million for watching this very long video. See you in Boston.